It's a whole new world we live in. Hey everyone, Kyle once again. And welcome back to another uh, review of uh, for Anime Month and continuing with the Pokemon series. And this time, what I was mentioning was the opening theme for of the next series. The Johto's, the Johto Journeys. Hence now we enter now the gold and silver and crystal generation of Pokemon. And I was just opening the theme for this, which I do enjoy the, the theme for this. But you still gotta catch them all and be the best that you can be. Du -du 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 -du. Pokemon Johto! <laughs> I enjoy that theme. So yeah. <coughs> now into the Johto series, which is of the gold, silver, and crystal Pokemon. And... Which I enjoy playing the, the Game Boy games and of course the reversions of Heart Gold and Soul Silver as well. And uh, really quick, um, I forgot to mention when I reviewed the Orange Island series that Ash was given the GS Ball. The GS Ball is this mysterious Pokeball, a gold Pokeball with the, word, the letters GS on it. For all I know, and hence for gold and silver. And. Uh, Professor Oak can't figure it out, so he was told to give it to this guy named Kirk, who lives in Azalea Town in the Johto region, where he specializes in making Pokeballs, special Pokeballs. So he told Ash to give it to him to see if he can figure it out. So I forgot to mention that um, when I review the Orange Island series for that, that's that little point there. But uh, the Johto Journeys, I really do enjoy, and... The first the, and the, this is uh, my favorite. It's always been my favorite gener. Um, I always I always love the, the, the I always enjoyed the first two generations of Pokemon growing up. Always like as everybody knows, probably a lot, probably ninety percent people always love the first generation of Pokemon with no doubt. Um, but I always enjoyed the second generation, the gold, the silver, crystal Pokemon. You know, with you know the third, so the Toadale, Cyndaquil, Chikorita. Um. I always enjoyed the second generation. Those always two of the best generation of Pokemon for me. And as for my brother, that's the stop. The, the that, that stops there with this generation. Cause from then on, with the Ruby and Sapphire, he never cared for those Pokemon from then on. So after the jo after the Gold Silver Pokemon, from then on, my brother doesn't care for those for the next all the all the generations of Pokemon afterwards. So he's never watched the series after he's he stopped watching the series after that. After the Johto journeys, and he hasn't watched the series ever after that. After what? After there. So that's him for you. You know, like I said he's. I said before that he doesn't. He doesn't care for these new Pokemon after the after the second generation. You know, so that's just him. But I enjoy. The, I, I I like the other Pokemon as well from the next generation from Ruby Sapphire. Uh, Dime. Uh, such a diamond and pearl, and black and white. So, but the first two generations I always enjoy of the Pokemon. So, <coughs> mm. but um, but as the story continues, and I saw all that now, this as the story continues. Um, since Ash was told to give the GS ball to Kirk, he now proceeds to go to enter in the Johto League. And once again, with the traveling with Misty and Brock, and once again, Team Rocket, you know, trying to catch Pikachu. Uh, he has to, uh, Cherry Grove City, where he meets with, uh, with, uh, the, prof the professor of the Johto, of the Johto region. Because, you know, each region has their own professor, you know, to go to, right? So, you know, like with um, the Unival League, you know, the Black and White series, there's, there's Professor Juniper. And then with the Colors region, the, X, the XY series, you have Professor Sycamore. You know, the, those each one is, is a professor for each of the region, you know, so. But here's the, they get the, to the, 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 the Professor Elm is also, who's also a student of Professor Oak. He's the professor of the Johto region. And he's taking care of this Toadel who's waiting for a new trainer to come. And Team Rocket snatches it. And 
like um, the Toa doll bites into Jesse's hair, tries to fling it, but it still st stays stuck on her. And the first of fighting towards fighting over the phone to call the boss. <laughs> and eventually they defeat they defeat Team Rocket and rescue the Toa doll. And from then on, um, he's on his uh, Ash is on his way to the Jota League. And it comes next to it comes to my 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 first favorite episode of the Joe Journeys, is the Double Trouble header, where <clears throat> where the where they meet uh, Casey, who's this uh, who's a baseball fanatic, who her favorite all time favorite team is the Electabuzz team, and she got her her first Pokemon at Chikorita, where she got from Professor Elm, and she's like seems like they're the team theme, which, <laughs> like, they're the, they're the, all three of them are saying, like, huh? And, like, like, uh, Ash kind of says, like, oh, you're the Electabuzz team is no good. They get creamed by the teams of Magikarp and Starmie. And that gets Casey riled up, and she wants to battle Ash. <laughs> and Ash, uh, uses Charizard. Easily defeats her three Pokemon. First, a Pidgey, which... Bounces at, uh, well, Charlie defeats it just using his nostril Gus. <laughs> and then uses a rat tad, just clearly bounces off of, uh, Charizard, then uses her Chikorita. And, like, Charizard spits out, like, a little small flame and sets, like, Chikorita's leaf on fire, and that was it. Um, and then Casey gets upset, she runs away, meets with Team Rocket, who pretends to be nice as the, you know, they're always manipul manipulative. Say the words of the wrong. Manipulative. I think in the he's the ash is the cheater. <laughs> so they have the, they duke it out again at the baseball field, and Team Rocket has a plan. Takes with Pikachu and Chikorita, and they <laughs> they use the those machines where you know the base where they send the baseballs at you. Those type of machines they send the baseball at you, and like Casey uses the badges just hitting like one after another, and Ash uses Bulbasaur and Pikachu uh, and, and Squirtle to deflect the balls back and like his team rocket even hits Meowth in the face. <laughs> and after they defeat Team Rocket, they go their separate ways. Until they meet again. Um and then next is the next episode after that is called A Sappy Ending, where they're walking to the forest, they see three trees that have no leaves on them. And they meet with this uh park this ranger named Woodruff. And they see this big tree. It's uh, habited by Heracross, who likes sucking sap. Um, they suck sap, and even the Butterfree licks the sap. But then they get driven away by some group of invaders, which is a group of Pinsir. And they scare away, like, the Heracross. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. They scare away most of the Heracross, except for one. And Pikachu uses electric to, to send them away. But... Woodruff explains that each of them has their own forest. Like, Pinsir had one, and Heracross has one. But something's been driving the Pinsir into Heracross territory. Until you find out later, it's been because of Team Rocket. Which, they had made this giant mechanical Pinsir to suck the sap out of their tree to make money from them, to use it to sell them, for make, to make money with. And... Like, Pikachu tries to use his electric attacks, but it absorbs it and sends it right back at them. Until Heracross comes in and saves it and just tosses it into the air and just explodes. And then, you know, Team Rocket blasting off again. And then everything's back the way it was. And that's the end of that episode, so. And then, a little bit afterwards, another, another one, of my favorite, one of my favorite episodes is Ignorance is Blissey. So they get to this little quiet town. <clears throat> they go to the Pokemon Center and they find out um, one of the Pokemon nurses is actually a Blissey. Because all the way up to like to the Pokemon, the, all the Pokemon centers with Nurse Joy is been Chansey. So, but this one is a Blissey, the evolved form of Chansey. <laughs> and like this, this Blissey is like really clumsy, like. She, like, they know that they're very hungry, so they fix some food, but she has, like, stacks of tr food and 
They run away, but all the food spills on Ash, and he tries to, when he's taking a bath, she explicitly takes a giant broom and scrubs to scrub Ash's back and just scrapes his back badly. He's like, ah! And then rubs rubbing alcohol, and Missy's like, when it hits those scratches, ah! And then Nurse Joy comes in and sees that and badges, and she screams as well. <laughs> and then uh, Team Rocket, they're hungry too, and just, James is like, I can't remember what food tastes like. So they sneak at the Pokemon Center to get some food, but, uh, like, Jesse chases after Meow because they're always fighting over the little scraps. And Jesse meets, uh, runs into Blissey, which, you can say coincidence, though she happens to run into this Blissey who, it turns out the Blissey is actually an old friend of Jesse because Blissey has this, this broken half of the necklace and wears because Jesse has the other broken half. It's when they both met when Jesse, when she was a girl, she wanted to attend to be a Pokemon nurse. So she attended this Pokemon school for Chansey. That's where she meets the one Chansey that becomes uh, Blissey. That's her old friend. So, since she wasn't qualified to be a nurse, so when she leaves, Chansey breaks that one half of the of the necklace off and gives it to Jesse. So, you can say it's coincidence, coincidental that they met, you know. But yeah, and... Since they're hungry, Blissey takes them to the storeroom where all the food is, and, J and James is like, "There's enough, there's enough food in here to give a Snorlax indigestion." And he gives them all their food, all the food, and and the next morning, and Ash is like, "This is all there is for breakfast," and there's barely nothing for them. They check the security footage and see they only it only shows Blissey taking the food. So, but Team Rocket's not in the picture though. But it only shows that Blissey is the one who took the food. So, Team Rocket makes a... Pl James comes up with the idea that we'll pretend that we tricked Blissey in giving us the food. So, so they're going to pretend they're the ones that they told Blissey to give them the food. So that way Blissey doesn't get in trouble. So, but eventually, which they won't find out, so, but they get the food back and all's well ends well for, for Blissey, you know, remembering Jesse, so... Then the next episode is called "About with Sp About with Sprout," where they um they meet with this uh they go to this school, and which is actually in the school the principal is named Earl who's always like the who's like who likes to dance. The principal, if everyone knows the um, playing Pokemon Stadium Two, in Pokemon Stadium Two, there's like this little um. You go to this one part where there's like the Pokey Academy or Pokey School, right? And you see Earl right there. You're like, oh, da, 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 you know, da da da, whatever. Yeah, so yeah, it's funny that, that, that Earl has a little appearance in that game. We see in this episode of About with Sprout, he's the principal of the school who likes to uh, dance. Like, come on, kids, give it, give it a whirl. <laughs> so, it's a school for little kids who want to become trainers. And there's this one kid named uh, Zaki, um, really wants uh, Ash's Pikachu. So <laughs> she tell, tells Pikachu, "Come on, Pikachu, you you can don't be Ash's Pokemon, be my Pokemon." And Pikachu's like, "Bika, Bika, Bika," he doesn't want to. And he steals a Pokeball from Ash, which technically it wouldn't it it wouldn't work because that's a, that's not Pikachu's Pokeball because. Even if Zaki threw the Pokeball at Pikachu, that's not his Pokeball, so it wouldn't have worked either way, so if he would have if he would have hit Pikachu with a Pokeball, it wouldn't work because that's not his Pokeball. But he thinks he sees Pikachu, but he captures it, and Tim Ash fall into that pit trap by Team Rocket. And Zaki throws the Pokeball with the thing it's Pikachu, but it's actually he caught a Bell Sprout. And, and James like Pikachu's sick. That's not Pikachu. <laughs> and they plan to use those, those a phony microphone to like in Ash's voice to like trick Pikachu. So, but they get foiled and they send off into um what was called the Sprout Tower, which you when you play the Hard Gold and Crystal versions in the game, you go to the Sprout Tower. So that's in the game. The, this, the sprout towers are like this, this giant beam that moves and waves like a bell sprout.
does. So Team Rocket plans to use that to like to saw the beam, and they attach this big rocket to it. But unless they give Pikachu, give Pikachu to them. And then Zack uses Bell Sprout to use the razor to get the remote control. And eventually, they're to, once again, you know, anyone who's seen this show, they're always full in Team Rocket's plans. They're on the they're on the rocket and they go zooming off and blasting off. So and but eventually, Virg Zack was not happy with his Bell Sprout. Now he is. So he plans to use it. He make it his well. It is, it is his first Pokemon that he caught. So. So that's that, and then the next episode, uh, next after episode after that is when Ash go finally gets to Violet City to fight the gym leader Faulkner, who specializes in flying Pokemon. He has a Pidgeot because Faulkner uses Pidgey as a foil Team Rocket's plan to capture Pikachu. So when he, Ash fights Faulkner, he uses uh, first he uses Hoot Hoot, and he uses a Dodrio, which Ash thought that uh, you know was is that because everyone knows that Dodrio can't fly. Well. <laughs> Fulker says, well, in that case, everybody's wrong. You mean yours can? And, because jump, uh, ju uh, like what, uh, Brock said, that's what Faulkner meant. Dodrio, ju Dodrio jumps so high, it's almost like it can fly. Yeah, so Dodrio, when it jumps very high, it's like it can fly. <laughs> but eventually, it's, it beats Pikachu, but, well, it, it beat, Pikachu gets beat up by it, though, but, Eventually he defeats Dodrio, but he's too exhausted to fight against his Pidgeot. So, and now the real battle is when Ash uses Charizard, and Rich, of course, you know, it's good like the usual. Charizard gets beat like Charizard gets beaten up at first because you know Pidge Pidgeot's really quick, but then Ash gets the idea since Pidgeot moves really quick, you know, forward, forward, and get Charizard from the back. So he uses that to his advantage. So it gets behind Pidgeot. And when Pidgeot uses his quick attack, Charizard quickly turns around and uses Fire Spin. And to me, I always thought this was always a badass moment when Charizard uses his Seismic Toss. Because every time when he uses his Seismic Toss, it shows like he's circling around the Earth. But this one, I really like this version of the Seismic Toss. So he uses to Seismic Toss and tosses Pidgeot to the ground. Of course, when you get mixed in with the, the music of the score with that sequence, makes me like that scene more, so... Yeah, so Charizard uses his seismic toss and just tosses Pidgey out to the ground. He wins his first uh, Jota League badge. So then he in the next one he's heads off to, Az to Azalea Town. That's where the town he's supposed to Ash is going to deliver the GS ball. And I'm not I'm not going through the series of episodes that. Um, well, I'm only explaining my favorite episodes of the Jota Journeys, but, uh, like the other episodes, I'm not getting to because everybody, I'm sure everyone by now has seen all the seasons, like, especially the, the first, the Intego League, the Orange Islands, and then with the Jota Journeys, so, but I'm only explaining my favorite episodes, like I said, I don't want to go through every single one, because they will take me forever, and I don't want to strain my voice, you know, it's going to be so sore, I don't want to strain it, so, but yeah, that's my, that's my favorite episode, that's, but I'm talking about my favorite episodes, so. Fighting Fire with Fire is my next favorite one. And the next one is another favorite is Going Apricorn when they finally get to Azalea Town. Well, yeah, but the episode before that is um, when the Azalea Town was in a drought because of Slowpoke. They have this, there's this myth about the Slowpoke when they yawn, it rains. So they could, they, but they say the Slowpoke, the Slowpoke well, and Kurt in this uh, Slowpoke suit. They stop Team Rocket and slow, the Slowpoke uh, yawn. It starts raining. The town is safe from the drought. So now, the next episode, which is favorite, another favorite of mine, is going Apricorn when they finally give. Uh, which I think that it, this was like a throw a throwaway story plot because I was it is a nip. This is a nitpick though because this basically it's a it's a plot point that's a throwaway because. All this time, uh, when Ash w w was supposed to give the GS, like when he first got to the or got from the Orange Islands, and he was supposed to uh, uh, travel all this way here to give it to Kirk, even though Kirk doesn't know what it is. After he gives it back, to, after he gives it to him, 
that's that's never brought up again after the series. After that point on, when when he when they leave Azalea Town, and you know, after when, um, um, he Ash won his badge there. It's never brought up again. So after he leaves the town, it's never it's never brought it's never brought up again about the GS ball, because of course the many things that people say it contains a uh, Celebi. But um, that point is never the GS ball is never brought up again. So it's never mentioned again after which from then on. So all that time with him traveling with the GS ball, even an episode a while back with dealing with the Quagsire, it took the GS ball. But that's never brought. It's, the GS ball is never brought up again. After after he gives it to him, so this was quickly cool, that's a nitpick I wanted to point out because after all the time he, he had it and finally gives it to him, he doesn't know what it is though. But you should have kept the update from then on though. But it was it was a throwaway plot point now because it's never brought up again after which. So, but regardless of that though, my, my favorite episode still is going Apricorn because um, Ash wants to see how there there are different color types of apricorn, you know, various colors, and can be each one can be made to a different specific uh, pokeball, like fastball, friendly balls, love balls, um, lure balls, heavy balls. <coughs> so, um, like in each of the, in each one of the, like there's a uh, in which uh, Brock. Uh, because there's a there's a few trees that have pine cone in it, and Brock wants to catch a pine cone, <laughs> and the pine cone is the explosive type. And Missy's like, How th I think it's scary. It looks like a grenade. <laughs> and at one point they uh they get chased by bee drills. <laughs> ah, bee drill. <laughs> and uh, which by the way they 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 um. Kurt's granddaughter uh, May Maisie takes him on the tour to f for each of the each for each co different colored uh, apricorn. So until one point, do they get to um, there's a tree that had black apricorns to make heavy balls with, and Team Rocket uses this gigantic fan to blow the apricorns off, and uh, the one pine code tries to take them on, trying to self-destruct, and Brock uses the fastball to catch it, and they defeat Team Rocket as well, and, like, and then Brock lets out Pineco and just self-destructs right in his face, <laughs> so, and then after which, um, um, Ash goes to the Azalea Town to meet Bugs, uh, meet Bugsy to battle for, who specializes in bug Pokemon. Um, wins, and then like I said, after after he leaves his after he wins his badge as they're leaving the town, Maisie comes up to gives them the new Pokeballs they that the Kirk made. Two of them are lure balls to which is to capture water Pokemon. Ash and Misty gets one, and Brock takes the heavy ball. And like I say, anything about the GS ball and Maisie says, Grandpa still doesn't know nothing about it. After which, then, GS Ball is never brought up again. So, th that's the whole story. That whole story along with the GS Ball, GS Ball has been thrown away now. But, yeah. Now, next item, another, another episode I enjoy is A, far, a Far-Fetched Tale. Um, where he meets this guy, I mean, this kid named Sylvester, who <coughs> is trying to get his Far-Fetched to cut wood using the cut attack. Because... During the I the Ilex Forest, which is where you, you travel after the uh, after Azalea Town, to head towards Goldenrod City, so he goes to the Ilex Forest and he's trying to use his uh, Farfetch'd to use a cut to, to cut to make special quality uh, Ilex charcoal. And Farfetch doesn't listen, runs away. Team Rocket's trying to capture it. And point point where um, um, Jesse uses Lickitung to steal Farfetch's leak, and it's like, and Mal's like, "Let's see how tough you are without your veggie." <laughs> but uh, of course, once again, once again, it's like the whole same. People say that as usual, they defeat Team Rocket over and over again. Yeah, I understand that though, but I still think it's fun. 
Yeah, so Long Sword should defeat Team Rocket, get Farfetch back, and uses, of course, Farfetch listens to cut the wood to make quality charcoal. So, and afterward, and then after which, um, shortly afterward, uh, Jesse, in the next episode, which is not a favorite episode of mine, though, but in the next episode when Jesse gets Wabafet <laughs> from then on, you know, Wabafet's always been poking in and out of his Pokeball. Wabafet. <laughs> uh, well, I think Wabafet is pretty, it's very funny. But my, 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 my next favorite episode is. Is Hour of the Hound Hour. <laughs> and so, like, the Hound Hour basically, they steal Ash's backpack, which had the bread in it, and steal Nurse Joy's uh, ham, which Team Rocket stole from her, but the Hound Hour stole from them. <laughs> and so, they, they plan to camp out at night to plan a decoy, which th they didn't like. So, they get into a fight in the pack leader. Uh, fights Pikachu, but the hero one of their own is very is in trouble. An injured, a sick and injured Houndour who is fighting a Golem. Golem. <laughs> they chase it away, but uh, the Houndour is very sick, so they had to get to the Pokemon Center right away. Uh, Team Rocket steals the most of the Houndour except for the pack leader and the injured one. They defeat Team Rocket, of course, and they say goodbye to the pack. Next is um, the Totodile Duel, is where uh, Ash and Misty they fight because there's a, a wild Totodile. While the while they're fit, they're fishing. Like Misty has a special lure of her, <laughs> and Totodile comes out. She's like goes goo goo gaga over it because you know how she loves water Pokemon. Oh, it's so cute, all that. <laughs> but it spits out her lure, and. Even sprays Team Rocket and both Misty and, and Ash uses the lure ball. They catch the Totodile though, but they don't know which which is which is whose though. But they are fighting over it, whose is whose. So Brock takes a possession of it. He's like they're going to need a referee. Okay, I'll take custody of this for now. It's pretty obvious that it's either one of you is going to give up or give in. So there's only one way to do this. Who gets to keep the Totodile? So. Ash and Misty fight it out. It's a three-on-three -three battle, and uh, since uh, Ash thought he was smart that Electric is, going to, is, weak, uh, is strong against water, so he's going to use Pikachu, but <laughs> smartly, uh, Misty uses Togepi, and you know P Pikachu doesn't like to hurt, doesn't want to hurt Togepi, so <laughs> first, like, Togepi gives, like, put to uh, Pikachu a hug and uses, like, his charm attack, and this Pikachu just runs away, so... <laughs> Uh, that was pretty funny. And then it's uh, Bulbasaur versus uh, Staryu. Bulbasaur beats Staryu. And then it's Chikorita. Well, I'm sorry, I had that wrong. It was Chikorita versus Staryu. I had that wrong. Sorry. It was Chikorita, Chikorita defeats Staryu. And then it's Bulbasaur against Missy's Poliwag. So, which Bulbasaur thought thought defeated Poliwag, but Poliwag... Blah. Poliwag evolves into Poliwhirl, and thought that would give Misty advantage because it evolved, and but this still wasn't enough because Bulbasaur defeats Poliwhirl using Solar Beam. So Ash wins the Poke wins Totodile because he has all three of the starter Pokemon. Guys, I forgot to mention he caught Cyndaquil before arriving in Azalea Town. So he has all three of the starter Pokemon, and of course. Earlier, I forgot to mention the caught Chikorita, who was a wild one, who ran away and he saved Chikorita. So he has all three of the starter Pokemon. So, uses the Total Dial to defeat Team Rocket. And Misty's like, Well, why do I want a Total Dial that can do what it wants where I have a nice Poliwhirl who evolves just for me? <laughs> so, yeah. Now, the next one is. Foul play is when they get into this dark forest and they meet with this guy named Professor Wiseman. And where he's where Professor Wiseman he's trying to capture this uh, unusually colored, rare colored knock towel. Yeah, this one's a different it's a different color and a bit smaller than the average knock towel though, but it's 
unusual color makes it a very rare Pokemon. So Dr. Wise was trying to capture it, but it keeps on failing. And, like, Ash tries to capture it, but it hypnotizes him. And makes he's talking to a rock thing, and that's Pikachu. <laughs> so, but Dr. Wise, I think he comes up with a new plan to capture it for good. And when he does, he... he his plan was to make it look like it, uh, the Noctowl's looking to a... Noctowl, he's, he's looking to a mirror, but he doesn't know it's used to hypnot, uh, it's hypnot, hypnosis. But it's looking at your mirror, it reflects and goes for, hypnotizes itself. But it actually it hypnotizes Dr. Wiseman and he picks up a rock as well. And Team Rocket uses this giant robotic Noctowl to capture the Noctowl. But Ash gets it, not, gets it out of their grasp. And Noctile uses the Pokem uses Ash's Pokemon to use uh, talks to it and uses them to their abilities to defeat Team Rocket. And then eventually Ash catches the Noctile. But that's another episode I enjoy. <coughs> and now we come to uh, this one is I was all growing up. This one is my brother lo uh, loves episode as well. This one is my all time favorite episode. Yes. This one is my all-time favorite episode of the series of Pokemon. It always it's, it's stuck with me ever since and I I, re, I mean I really love this episode. And that is Forest Grumps. Where where Team Rocket and Ash and the group they get separated where Jesse is with Ash and Brock and Pikachu while Misty is stuck with Je with James and Meowth because they get separated because the, the the forest they're in is filled with ursaring. They're all using hyper beam like when they first come in, and they use a hyper beam. Meowth is like, "That's a hyper beam!" They're all running away as they're the, the, as they're ursaring, ah! using the hyper beam to chase them away, and then they all get separated. <laughs> and then Jesse Jesse's like tells Ash and Brock's like. Well, let's hold the hostility and order a temporary truce. And Wild Effect comes out and it's like, just like, I said truce, not surrender. <laughs> and then it was fun with uh, Jesse, uh, uh, James, M Meowth, and Misty. Like, they they try to pick a direction. There's three directions. Then they always like, one, two, three, and Meowth wins. Like, the Yardfinger wins. Which he keeps on winning, so... Like, they try to go to one, uh, they try to go to this one, it's nighttime, they try to go to this one cave, but it's filled with ursaring. <laughs> and, and, and then at nighttime, where, um, Jesse tries to s sneakily take, uh, Pikachu, but runs into an ursa and runs back into the cave they're sleeping in. And with, uh, Misty, James, and Meowth, they try to go down this cliff, but they never reach the bottom, so they're hanging on this one small cliff. And it's too dark to see the bottom. And, like, Missy draws a line. It's like, nobody crosses this line. You stay on your side, and you stay on mine. Hey, how come you get more room than we do? And Missy's like, you don't need as much room as I do, because your brains are a lot smaller than mine. And James is like, first we have one redhead boss us around, now we got another doing the same thing. <laughs> but then by the next by the, by the next morning, they just, they, they just realize, they realize they were just a few feet from the bottom. <laughs> and so, eventually they're they're chased by the Earth Ring again, and they reunite. They re they re reunite. Then, though their only way a way of escape is this rickety looking rope bridge. And I like that where, as they're running across a bridge, it's it, it freeze frames each one of them. Like it shows it freeze frames Jesse and Meowth. Trying to uh, step lively, and then Misty, Brock, and Ash freeze frames on them as a piece of rope snaps. And then the funny part for, and then my funny part, my favorite uh, part for me is, um, and then a freeze frame on James where he almost falls through the, the bridge. He's like he's hanging on as he falls through the bridge. He's like, <laughs> but the Earthman cuts the bridge, and they're all hanging on the other side, and they get their Pokemon. Uh, to help pull them up, and since they're all safe, they're not being chased by the Ursa anymore. The truce is over, and then Missy Psyduck is on Team Rocket's side. And Missy's like, "Get over here! You're on our side." 
<laughs> so, they're fighting, and then Togepi, once again, using his powers, like, I guess, Mentronome, and sends them flying, and they, they find that they, since they couldn't figure out why the Ur Ursuline kept on chasing them, they, they finally see a sign that says, this is their, the Ursuline's mating grounds. Do not enter if it's the last thing you do. And then the episode ends with Team Rocket back on back on the Earth Ring side, and it's like they're like, "Here we go again, wab wab." <laughs> so yeah, that's that's my all-time favorite uh, Pokemon episode. I've always loved that episode. It's it's, it's stuck with me growing up, and to this day, it still is. I love uh, Forest uh, Grumps. That's that is my all, that is my all-time favorite episode. So yeah, and then there's two more episodes after that. Um, one deals with a giraffe ring, and then one dealing with a cent uh, Well, Actually, no. That was that was earlier. Um, it was dealing with the giraffe ring, and then the next was dealing with um, this little booklet, which was all a scheme, a setup. By other Team Rocket members, Butch and Cassidy, which of course are named after, you know, Butch Cassidy. Butch and Cassidy, they, they said this little scheme, this little book thing, oh, what, what, uh, Pokemon each person is by like uh, when they're born or whatever. So yeah. But uh, it's because that one episode thing that that James, uh, he thinks he's he's a Moltres, so <laughs> he wears a Moltres costume. But that episode, that's the end of the Johto Journeys, so... But yeah, I enjoy I enjoy the Johto Journeys. And my favorite episode, is, my all-time favorite episode is Forrest Grumps. I always love that episode to this day. Always be my all-time favorite episode of Pokemon. But yeah, I enjoy the Johto Journeys. And then next is, is continuing on, uh, on the Johto, on Ash's way, competing in the Johto League, is next is Johto League Champions. So that's going to be the next one after that. But for the Jojo Journeys, I really do enjoy. You know, but, but you still got to catch them all and be the best that you can be. So that's my so that's my review of the series of the jo Pokemon of the Jojo Journeys. I still enjoy the series. I always enjoy the rest of the series, but this is the ones that they're really ones I enjoy the most. Because I grow with them most. But yeah, that's the review of the Johto Journey, the Johto Journeys. Thanks for watching, and see you tuned on for the Johto League Champions later.